Hi, how's it going? I'm sort of sick, I'm sort of under the weather. But I had a bit of time and this is a quick one. So I'll just do it first and then demonstrate or well, explain the details of it. But basically we're doing a, a ray tracer and this is going way back to an early stage where we're just passing in a bunch of spheres. Run this right now, we're getting about 250 frames per second. Oh, this is this doesn't sit well with me, so we'll just quickly I haven't fixed this up. I'll just quickly change the dispatch. Subgroup size. So we're now rendering eight pixel, so eight by eight tiles. And I'll just go down and set the local size. There we go. Okay, well, this is fine. I talked about this in another video. That's not what I came here to talk about but it is good to get a starting baseline. So at the moment, we're about 1800, <clears throat> 1800 frames per second. Now, the issue, the thing that I wanna change is instead of encoding the spheres, 1900, instead of encoding the spheres to a texture and then reading the data off from a texture, I'm going to encode the spheres in a storage buffer. Uh, what is it? That's it, a shader storage buffer object. I keep, keep blanking on that name. Okay, so. Like I said, I'm going to do it first and then I'm going to explain how it works or why we'd want to do that. Okay, so looking through this, these structs are all fine. They do not have to change. It's just down here. Uh, currently, I'm storing the spheres as an image. And instead of that, I'm going to set this up. So I'm declaring that I will have some sort of buffer, which is just full of a bunch of spheres. This STD430 just specifies how the data is laid out in memory. Totally fine. So I'll just go right down the bottom and I have this unpack sphere function. I'll just remove that. We're not gonna use that. That was going into the pixels and reading the individual components and everything. And I'll also get rid of the definition and then I'll just search. Okay. So here where I'm saying unpack sphere, I should really just be querying into that buffer. So, <clears throat> sorry. So, um, the, here I've called this scene data, but that scene data is not used in referring to the actual the stuff, the underlying memory. This is simply identifying the block name. And we always just use the, the spheres variable like we've got here. Okay, cool. So now the shader is expecting a storage buffer. We'll need to go to our engine and create one of those. And that is happening up in this create resource memory. Here we go. First of all, it's probably a bad idea to be appending step by step because every time we append it, like it's a bad operation, it rebuilds the array every single time. It's much better to pre-allocate the data. And I'll go 1024 spheres, still eight, eight floats for each of them. We are still basically gonna be using this layout and the reason for that is memory alignment. So if we are just using a VEC3, the GPU will still allocate an empty float there because it optimizes the memory read allocations, uh, the memory read op operations. Okay, so we'll generate a buffer and then we will um, bind it. Okay, so now we're just uploading data to the buffer. So we're going to be uploading to that storage buffer, which we bound above. The next argument is the number of bytes that we're gonna send, which we can set there. And then we'll have the data that we're sending. And then finally, the usage for that data. So, I mean, we can always just play around with the different options. I'm going to, um, 
I'll say dynamic and dynamic read. There we go. Okay, then the last thing I need to do in setting all of this up is bind that buffer to binding number um, one. So it's binding number one and let's be very explicit about that. Okay, so that will pre-allocate a whole bunch of zeros. And then if we go down to the prepare scene, ah, here we have record sphere. This is fine. This is fine. I'm happy with this. There will implicitly be another zero stored on the end. That's fine. We're not going to read it anyway. Okay, so prepare scene. At this stage, we would send all the data over to the texture. We're not dealing with the texture anymore. We will just have to go through the following steps. Firstly, we bind the sphere buffer as the storage buffer that we're currently going to work on. Then we send over the data. Now we actually don't need to send all of the data. What we could do is send some data. And we do that with the GL buffer sub data function. So we go, okay, um, the way this works is we have an offset, which we'll say is zero. And then the number of bytes that we're sending, we have eight floats. Every float is four bytes. And then the number of spheres that we're sending. And then we just pass in the data that we're sending. And then just to be sure, I am going to, again, rebind that as binding number one, just to be sure. Okay, so remember that number, 1800, 1900. Let's look at how the performance is now. Oh, it's the same, but it's a little higher. Possibly affected by OBS running in the background. When I ran this before, I was getting about 2,000 before, um, just 2,000 with images, and then about 3,000 with storage buffers. But anyway, hopefully you can appreciate there is some improvement. And I just want to talk super briefly about why this is good. So what we've done, there are really two benefits. The first benefit is the very obvious, we no longer have to worry about picking out individual pixels from an image and interpreting those as floats. That's a little weird, I'll be honest. And then the second benefit, oh, and we, we, we eliminate an extra function call and a bunch of extra like sampling and reading stuff. And then the second benefit is that shader storage buffer objects are not really limited the same way that images are, because when you make an image and you encode a sphere into every row of the image, there's only so many rows you can have in an image. And you can do tricks where you run down to the bottom of the image and then loop up around to the next column or something, but it's introducing a whole bunch of arithmetic which shouldn't be necessary. And the thing with shader storage buffer objects is their size is really just limited to whatever the GPU can store, basically. So you could have millions of spheres now. Anyway, like I said, this is just a little quickie. I hope you appreciated that and I will get back to recovery and I'll, I'll see you again soon. All right, have a good one. Bye.